So before we get into this episode, I just need to have a huge disclaimer on this video. Holy crap, my commentary was so dry. I was in so much pain. I debated even saying this because, you know, the internet and people are immature, but I was dealing with some bad cramps this episode, okay? It was horrible. I was, I literally had to pause halfway through, go lay down and cry, and then come back and keep recording. So my commentary was so, so dry. So I seriously want to apologize for it in advance because it's, it's, it's a rough one. I call this the cursed episode because I should not have recorded. I should not even have attempted to record, yet I did. But nevertheless, you know, what's done is done, and I hope you guys enjoy this episode, nevertheless. So, yeah, enjoy. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin, and today we're playing more Disco Elysium. Okay, so I have a few things to address in this episode. If I look dead inside, <laughs> is because I have a headache, and I've been dealing with a stomach ache for the past, like, two weeks now. So, that's pretty fun. Um, it's especially bad today. I don't know what... I ate or what my body is doing to me, but um, I'm in a lot of pain and I'm probably gonna shift around a lot this episode. I know I probably shouldn't record when I'm feeling this way um, because I feel like I'm gonna be a little more passive aggressive than normal, but I, I just wanna play this game. <laughs> and I'm up for recording, like don't get me wrong, I'm not just playing it because I, I wanna play it and I have to record while I'm doing it. I actually wanna record for this game. I love this series on my channel. It's been so much fun. Every time I stop recording for this game, I get sad and I just wanna keep playing it. And I know I can't do that all day today, but I'm very excited to continue it. Um, even if I'm not feeling tip top shape, but I won't let that stop me. Anyways though, let's get into the recap of what happened in the last episode because we did a lot. So basically in the last episode, we traveled further across the water lock, around the coast, even past the church and we found this old dilapidated building and a boardwalk and we went out on the boardwalk and there was actually another dead body on the boardwalk. Very unexpected, I didn't think we'd be facing another corpse, but here we are. Uh, Martinez is just littered with them, apparently. However, in this case, it was more than likely an accidental death because it looked like the man stepped on a wrong piece on the boardwalk and it slipped out and he hit his head on a bench and died. So it was pretty gruesome, pretty horrible. Even still, Kim and Harry decide to take the case. So we're gonna do that. Even though there's not really much to take, like there's not really much to investigate, they don't have to do a field op autopsy either because it was mo more than likely an accidental death. I can't speak. So yeah, we took that anyway, um, and I'm interested to see where it goes. We found a library card in his jacket pocket, so that's really our only lead right now. We also met a father and his son looking at the huge building and he told us about it. And uh, I think he was a professor because of the way he talked, and um, I think they said he was a professor. <laughs> Anyway, he was pretty nice, so I'm sure we'll run into him again sometime. There was another thing while we were over there. We tried to look in the building and we asked him if he could see inside. And he basically just kind of gave up and was like, no, my eyesight's way too bad. Obviously he has glasses, but I guess I didn't realize how bad his eyesight really was. But he talked about how he used to have a partner and they nicknamed him Eyes because he had to see things for Kim because Kim can't see that well. I'm wondering if his bad eyesight will come into play later at like a crucial moment. I really hope not because that is gonna stress me out. He said he can shoot well enough, so at least that's a relief, but you know, you can't always rely on that. And also along the coast was a man named Gary, the cryptozoologist. Another man was there, his name was Morel, and he's Lena's husband. And both of them are cryptozoologists and they were out there studying um, these like phasmids, these insects, <laughs> and setting traps. Gary, on the other hand, is a raging racist. <laughs> Gary, we talked to a lot. Uh, he was very interesting and also a giant racist. <laughs> um, he immediately called Kim Yellow Man, so that's excellent. Obviously not the most pleasant dude, and uh, Kim wrote him a fine. <laughs> I forgot what it was even for, but I think he just wanted to do it. And as it turns out, of course, he was the owner of that racist mug that we found in the trash outside the Whirling in Rags. And 
Gary was also the one who threw the victim's clothes into the trash container. Apparently, he knows the guy who has the keys for it, and he's just been using the trash so that he doesn't have to pay for, like, the trash um, collection service or whatever. Another thing is that he also stole a piece of armor from the victim's body, the chest plate. So now we have the chest plate, which is really cool. Overall, Gary was kind of funny to talk to, but obviously not my favorite dude in the game. He kind of reminded me of like Squilliam from Spongebob. <laughs> we also talked to Morel, like I said, and he talked about how he's Lena's husband and all that. So we were able to let Lena know that he, um, he was across the water lock and he wasn't able to go back to her because that whole area was broken and needed to be repaired. So he should return to her soon, I hope. I'm thinking maybe I should talk to her a bit before her husband comes back in case like they leave together and then I won't be able to talk to her. I don't know. I kind of wish I talked to her about the whole situation before I met Morel because I don't know if I missed out on a lot of XP because of it, but I'm not sure. Oh, my stomach. <laughs> Oh man. Last but not least, we finally picked up what? <laughs> we learned the song, the sad song, the one that Harry sang um the night that he trashed his hostel room. Um we learned the song and we convinced Gart to let us sing it at karaoke night in the Whirling and Rags. I was so relieved because I managed to pass the check you needed to sing the song. So, I managed to sing it correctly. It was very nice and very sad pretty dark actually. It was sung by um, Ancient Reptilian Brain, I think is the section that that sounds like. I kind of just assume that's Harry's voice, but there's a bunch of different voices in his head. <laughs> okay, maybe I should phrase that differently. That's just one section of his mind and I guess I don't know if that's his voice for real. I, I honestly don't know. I'm just gonna go ahead and say maybe. <laughs> Maybe? It was a very sad, slow song, um, but I really liked the performance, and at the end of it, um, people clapped, and we did pretty good. I decided to dedicate the song to, of course, my boy Kim, and we made him blush. Okay, it said that he was incapable of blushing, um, but if he weren't, he would blush. So I count that as a win. I am one step closer to getting Kim to fall in love with me. So. We're almost there, folks. I assume it's almost nighttime, I think, so I'm just gonna wait around until I can s talk to the smoker on the balcony again because we didn't manage to do that the other night when Kim left. So I'm gonna try to do that this episode and see what his, uh, <laughs> ow, Sunday friend is all about. So that's the plan for this episode. Um, probably start a new day, see what's going on. Let's not waste more time and let's get back into this game and see what happens next. I'm just gonna say it. We're all adults here, you know? Um, I assume people aren't going to be childish about this. Um, yeah, it's period cramps, so, you know. I got a heating pad. I'm literally sitting here. I'm <laughs> playing this game with a heating pad. This is true love. This is how you know I really love this game. So I'm willing to play it when I'm in uh, severe amounts of pain. Oh, okay. We're back. Um, I don't know why I'm playing. <laughs> I'm in so much pain. It's fine. Hi. Oh, hello, dear. Hi. There you are again. She sounds glad to see you. So your husband is some kind of scientist? Oh, yes. A zoologist. A cryptozoologist, to be more precise. What is cryptozoology? I just need to wait for this heating pad to warm up. Oh my god. I still have had a stomach ache for the past, like, two weeks, by the way. It's just that this is definitely cramps. <laughs> okay, what is cryptozoology? It's a pseudoscience that attempts to legitimize research into mythological beasts and urban legends. Oh, I guess he isn't a fan. The lieutenant sounds unimpressed. That's uh, one opinion, yes. And people are entitled to their opinions. She's used to playing off such insults casually. But they still affect her. That was about, like, the first time Kim has been rude to someone. Like, who's just, like, a good person. <laughs> so that was kind of rude. My apologies, ma'am. I did not mean to undermine your hobby. Thank you. It's not a hobby, dear. It's a subfield of zoology. One specializing in animal species that are so exceedingly rare that many assume them to be extinct or even fictitious. 
Searching for such species called cryptids is difficult and often thankless. And frankly, many scientists are too lazy to do it. Universities these days are rarely interested in supporting real research. She's completely internalized her husband's struggles. They are her own. Aww. <laughs> Maybe you could convince her to tell you about some cool cryptids. I have the green ape pen and I let her know that Morella is okay. If I fail this, I know the game is really against me. Sometimes okay. the most charming thing you can do is be reasonable in your requests. I'm feeling a little bit better. The heating pad is warmed up, so we're good. Could you tell me about one? Just one interesting cryptid? I suppose you could use a break and I could use a distraction. Nice. One cryptid, like <laughs> you said. One. This can't turn into some kind of cryptid extravaganza. We have things to do. Lieutenant throws you one of his looks. Okay. Okay, Cam, just one little cryptid, promise. He nods and assumes a waiting posture. <laughs> Ooh, tough choice there. Okay, okay, fine. I can only pick one, really? What's the biggest cryptid? It's the tiniest cryptid. What's the most dangerous cryptid? Is that a cryptid on this pen you gave me? Take out the pen. No, that's just an ape. Are there any invisible cryptids? Okay. What's the biggest cryptid? That would be the giant of Koko Nur. She says as if it's common knowledge. The giant lives in the most arid parts of the vast Koko Nur desert <laughs> in South Samara. Casting a strange light across the barren wastes. Wait, what do you mean strange light? Um, mirage or a psychogenous luminance. She does not elaborate the nature of this luminance further. And just how big is it? No one knows for sure. It is like an awful mountain appearing from below the horizon and expanding to cover almost a third of your field of vision. Is it dangerous? The towering luminosity of Kokonur is a bad omen in local folklore. Some say it's a fata morgana, others, fate unimaginable. Damn. Who are you? No animal can be that <laughs> large. It's a mirage. Lieutenant interjects. That's what makes it so peculiar. A species surviving at the very limits of scientific law. The giant of Kokonur must be the largest animal the planet can support. There are limits, you see, to how large a metabolism and ecosystem can beget. Some say a gravity anomaly below the Kokonur desert might allow the creature to grow to these gargantuan sizes. Great. This is great shit. <laughs> more. Okay, what's okay, maybe he won't notice if I ask one more. What's the tiny cryptid? Hey, you promised you'd only ask about one cryptid. All right. But Kim, don't you want to hear about another cryptid too? Right, okay, we can move on for now. It'd be dishonorable to re-enge on the promise. Okay, fine. He nods approvingly. All right. Damn it, I'll have to talk to her about it when he's not around. There's something I wanted to do, actually. Now that I think about it. Um, there's probably gonna be a lot of background noise this episode. I'm sorry, this whole thing is a mess. Oh, my stomach. It's okay. Thank God for heat, man. Alright. So, what I wanted to do... I think I'm able to retry this check in here. Let's go to the gym. Alright. Smells like leather and sweat. Let's see if I have a better chance at this now. The barbell waits patiently on the floor, like a dog for its master. Okay, <laughs> I don't have like of a chance, but... Oh, I can level up. But I can't level this up anymore. Shit. Alright, I changed my outfit a little bit. Let's see if this helps. The barbell waits patiently on the floor, like a dog for its master. Let's try it. Yay! Alright. 
Nice. Oh god, am I gonna die? <laughs> an human amount of strength. You raise the barbell up in the air. Your biceps tremble, but you're a savage. This is a children's game. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm a true champion. Say nothing, revel in the feeling. Oh yeah. A warm wave of accomplishment washes over your head as you drop Yay. the barbell to the floor. <laughs> For a moment, it feels like you're strong enough to succeed at anything you ever set your mind to. Hell yeah. Ow. I feel like I'm giving birth. Hey, but you're still in the ghost house. What if someone heard this? What if they know you're here? Who cares? Good technique. The lieutenant nods with approval. Thanks. Pretty impressive, huh? It might make you say, want to give me a kiss? <laughs> I don't feel very good right now. It's all good though. What else should we do? I think I need a bit of a break. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Um, I have... <laughs> I took two Tylenol and I have vengeance flowing through my body right now. I am determined to record today even if it kills me! I guess we'll talk to Joyce to see what she wants us to do because, um... I know that she wants us to do all these what am I talking about? Okay. Okay. I think what I'm gonna do is talk to Joyce because she wants us to do some sort of side quest for her. Um, even though I showed her my badge, she refuses to help me. But that's fine. Let's see what this wall has to say. I know I'm gonna fail it, but... Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. Yeah. yeah. Why? It's a wall. An ordinary wall. Why must we stop to look at this wall every time we pass by? We have business to attend to. The lieutenant's eyes. You're being a little bitch today. <laughs> okay, I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. I'm just... I'm salty. Cave side apartments. Okay. I'm just in pain. Okay, I'm not... I'm not mad. I'm just... Is this lifted up? Did someone lift this up? Alright, maybe not. Maybe I'm seeing things. Hi. What did you want us to do again? You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Okay. Okay, tell me about this alleged... Okay, tell me about this alleged drug trafficking. It's quite straightforward. Someone is using Terminal B to smuggle raw ingredients from the Samaran Isola into Revachol, with the Union's blessing. Wild Pines has suspected it for years. Ingredients for what, ma'am? Meth and dextroamphetamine, GBL and various synthetic psychedelics. Honestly, it might be quicker to say what you can't make from the stuff. Yikes. Let me get this straight. The materials come from Samara to Revishal through the terminal? Yes. After they clear the terminal, we lose track. The actual production is taking place at various sites in and around Jamrock Quarter, north of here. Wild Pine seems to be well apprised of the local drug trade, ma'am. Do you mean to say the Union also produces the product? Sells drugs, I mean? We're in logistics. It's our business to know. And no. As far as the company knows, the Union does not produce it. They transport the ingredients for a cut. Was that that large container that we moved and that we can't get into? And you want us to investigate? Yes, but you won't get anything out of Evrat and the Dock Workers Union. Still, every chain has its weak link. She raises her bony finger. Leo? The handoff. The motor oh. <laughs> at the roundabout. Oh no, the racist one? The lorries. Am I gonna need bolt cutters for this? The lorries. Precisely. Someone needs to move the ingredients from the harbor into the city. 
Once they reach Jamrock, they're distributed to a network of local manufacturers well beyond our grasp. But in transit, they are vulnerable. Perhaps you've noticed that a number of lorries are tangled in a traffic jam oh. at the roundabout just now. Wait. Interview the drivers who are still hanging about. One of them might be waiting for a crucial shipment. She gives you a knowing look. Her irises are light green, like the river Esperance in bright daylight, upstream where it's clearer. Uh, the racist guy isn't the only one that we've talked to. It's It was the other guy, um... I forgot his name, but he was the one where his voice lines weren't being spoken. But we could talk to him, he was nicer. I'll be explicit. If you find this driver, I will share company secrets with you. Could be either one then. Alright. You'll be indebted to her, in a way. But one step ahead of the Union, in another. Why didn't you come to the RCM earlier? We did. On more than one occasion. Apparently, there's some sort of inter-precinct disagreement about whose jurisdiction this area falls under. Minor Kims? We know the company has launched its own probe into the Union's alleged involvement. We also know it's come up empty. It's not just the RCM. No one's been able to find any hard evidence. Well, here's your chance, officers. She smiles and points towards the roundabout. It's no coincidence the lorries are stranded like there like that, is it? No. We asked East Motor Track to raise the drawbridge. The road company is a partner of one of our subsidiaries. However... She pauses, looking into the sea. This is a limited time opportunity. Once the complaint has been processed by the Trade Committee, they'll have no choice but to lower the drawbridge, and the operation will continue. Thousands of litres of raw ingredients will pour onto the streets of Revachol. Not the east across the river, but the west. The vulnerable. The weary. She's really trying to pull on my heartstrings now. Well, at least this solves one mystery. What is that, Lieutenant? Why I had to call East Motor Tract and beg them to open a drawbridge for me. I'd wonder since I first drove in on my motor carriage. Hmm. I am sorry for the inconvenience, Lieutenant Kisaragi, but we need them trapped here. This is a unique opportunity. I'm sure you understand. What proof do you have that the Union is involved? How do you think they're financing this strike? There are thousands of unpaid dot workers going strong for the fourth month straight. I guess I didn't realize it's been going on for this long. There was a shakedown of local businesses preceding the strike. Many were squeezed to bankruptcy to fund it. With all due respect to these desert cacti, the contents of a few cash registers cannot provide for 2,000 men. The local businesses can scarcely provide for themselves. I guess she's got a point. So you think the strike is being funded with source ingredients for drugs? Precisely. Smuggled out of that very gate at night, most likely, then loaded onto lorries and driven to Jamrock. You simply need to find one driver who will open up to you. It sounds like she tried looking into it herself, though she's clearly not the type your typical lorry man would confide in. Yeah. We already have some suspicions that one of the drivers was present at the lynching. The two might even be connected. Wait, which one? Was it the racist guy? Or not. Though, if you have evidence to the contrary, I'm eager to hear it. As eager as I am to share it, Lieutenant, once the job is done. Okay, I made up my mind about the smuggling investigation. Yes? <laughs> she sounds really like, well, we will take this case, probe the driver, see what it yields. Excellent. According to my reports, there are at least three lorry drivers lingering near the roundabout. Hopefully one of them will know something. It may come to nothing, or it may just blow the case wide open. I can keep the drawbridge up for a few more days at least. You should have the time you need. Alright.
In the meantime, let me know if there's any other way I may be of assistance. She takes another long sip from her seemingless, seemingly bottomless thermal cup. Yeah, she's been drinking out of that thing for ages now. Alright, well, it's not like we really had a choice in the matter. So, I guess we'll go interview those dudes while we wait for it to be 9 p.m. Why can't I remember the third lorry driver? I remember the two. Why can't I think of the third one? You, sir! Now it's turning into a kind of a snow limbo, man. <laughs> What's on your mind? He searches for the right expression. You seem like a man who knows about drugs. <laughs> ah, man. Me and narcotics go way back. Had some good time surfing the psychic waves of my own consciousness, you know? <laughs> he folds his hands behind his head and leans back. What? Those days are behind me. There are other addictions in my life now. Why the inquiry, my man? My man? He pauses, letting the memory dissipate. Do you finance those other addictions with drug trafficking? I need to get a high and I'm looking for a dealer. Uh, no. Um... Let me be straight with you. I'm trying to figure out who's smuggling drugs out of Terminal B. We have a credible lead, sir. Someone on this roundabout is waiting for a bell shipment from the harbor to load it on their lorry and drive it to Jamrock. Lieutenant steps in. Not me, ma'am. No way. I don't need any trouble. Shit's bad enough anyway. This jam's got folks up in arms and I'm afraid it's headed toward a conflagration. Conflagration? Wait, then why are you still hanging around? Who do you think could be conducting the drug trade then? Why, else, why are you still hanging around? Gotta guard the stuff. Bosses don't look kindly on missing cargo. And it gives me time to work on my rhymes. That's fair. Who do you think could be conducting the drug trade then? Look, man, I try to stay away from the criminal underbelly of Revachol. I'm a guest here. You really need to find another man to probe with those questions. Sorry. We wouldn't say he's lying, sire. It's not a lie. It's something else. Impossible to say what at this point. But there's something in him. Some trepidation. He's a poet. Hit him with your best verse. Um, okay. I need to up my conceptualization. One moment. up my skill all right should work now, now right turning into a kind of a snow limbo man what's on your mind hit him with your best verse your <sighs> best verse you don't even have a bad verse come on you. just tumbleweed and liquor stains wait no what are you doing this is gonna <laughs> She broke me. She fucking broke me. Oh. That's brutal, man. But you know, time will... No, stop. He's already mortified. No, come on. <laughs> oh, no. No, Tommy. These are my rhymes. Listen. She fucked me till I bled. That's, um... In the name of God, what are you doing? Oh no, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh no. It's not real, guys. It's not my actual thoughts. It's a poem. I will never be the same again. She's always there. Fuck the case. Fuck everything. Total doom. It's not real, guys. Yeah, yeah, I get that. And it's cool, but... Oh no! Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I get it. These are your rhymes. They're from your life. Doesn't matter if they're robust. They're honest. <laughs> so... Thanks, man. He doesn't know what to say, so he just repeats. He's not lying. He liked the end. Oh. Yes. And I also thank you for stopping. We have a drug investigation to return to. Yeah. How about we do that? Yep. That sounds good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. I changed my outfit again. Does anyone else notice Kim being extremely passive-aggressive this episode? It's appropriate, because... Same. Well, let's talk to the racist dude, I guess. Hi. Looking for something odd? Come to tell me to fuck off again? Perhaps. 
You're a lorryman, right? What's your stance on drugs? Drugs? They're shit, man. I don't let anything pollute my body. He takes a long drag on a cigarette. Uh, <laughs> sure. Why not? You know where that shit comes from? Sarah Miridza. Safre. Il Mara. They take the money from our local junkies here and then use it to outcompete us in the manufacturing sector. They know they can't beat us in a fair fight, so they have to get us to weaken ourselves somehow. It's racial sabotage, racial economic sabotage. What? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I took a long break, a really long break. I laid down with a heating pad. I cried a little bit, um, but we're back. Um, I think everything in the world is trying to stop me from recording today, but you know what? A normal person would give up right now. Do I look normal to you? <laughs> this is kind of a mistake to keep recording, but you know what? It's fine. I need to talk to this guy again because I had to close out the game and it didn't save. So I had to do everything I did in this episode again. <laughs> You're a lawyer man, right? <laughs> Okay, you, why not? They know they All right. By the way, I yes, I'm still in pain, but I'm pushing through it, okay? I really... I need to feel like I did something today, because today has just gone so wrong. It can't just be a little bitch. And I, I'm sorry, I still love you. Uh, hold on, but they make El Ghul alcohol in El Mara, too. I was told they do. Uh, I don't go for that foreign piss. Proper booze is made in Mundi. Or sometimes... I like a drum of that Yugo Grad vodka. Koikos and worse much, but they do no booze. Listen, I agree. It's our responsibility to keep this poison off the streets of Revishol, right? If I say I agree, that's not me agreeing to his racist bullshit, right? He eyes you wearily, unsure how to respond. This goes on for about two seconds. Then... I don't know shit. And if I did... I wouldn't tell you. Okay. <laughs> he puffs on a cigarette. Then what are you still doing? Then what are you still hanging around here for? Most other Kamenuars have left. Is that how you say that? What do you think? I can't leave the Lorient unguarded. Stuff's been getting looted lately. It's those little kids sneaking on at night. If they touch my stuff, the bosses will be on my ass like ass cancer. There was a bunch of spilled boxes in the back of a big lorry nearby. Hmm. I did see one lawyer with the trailer door open on my way here. Do you know what happened? Say nothing. The man pulls on his cigarette furiously, probably still thinking about mosquitoes and ass cancer. <laughs> if it's not you, then who's running drugs through Terminal B? Isn't it obvious? Fucking ceiling. That beady eyed sus Samarin. His little side business is a scam. I wouldn't be surprised if he was peddling drugs as well. Ceiling? Who's that? He's a Samaran guy who likes to pretend he's some kind of businessman. Or really, he's just selling his employer stuff. Stuff he stole after he broke the seals on his human ox lorry. Where do I find him? Just follow the smell. It smells like uh, apricot and oil when you're nearby. The lorryman lets out a raspy croak at his own sense of humor. Yes, yes. Where is he? Looks like uh, I offended your partner there. Too bad. Sea Lang's usually a little bit south of here, near the canal. You can't miss him. Just watch yourselves. Oh, near the canal. All right. He doesn't look at the lieutenant. His tribe are natural liars. It's in their blood. He's your man, all right. One hundred percent. He nods in a sagely manner, then another puff of that cigarette. I wouldn't be so sure about it. Not until we've heard what Si Leng himself has to say. Guess we need to pay Si Leng a visit then. Guess so. He grins, contented with himself. All right, thank you, asshole. Oh, is this a trap? Nice. There's a trap in the reeds at your feet. Looks like the same one you saw Morel set before. Same mesh, 
Same wiring. Looks like there's something in there. Uh, look around. The reeds bend forlornly toward the sand. Snow covers the broken stalks like a shroud, and they shimmer, ghostly, in the darkness. In the east, the city center hums to you. The constant, distant song, louder on this part of the coast, nearer somehow, and there's that cold again. Always the cold. Reach for the trap. Locusts are crawling around in the trap, confused but uneaten. You see no carnivorous reed phasmid gorging on them. Big surprise. Anyway, <laughs> one down, three to go. He is being so salty today. Well, for him it's the same day, but for me, it's a different day. Damn, I was hoping it would be in the first one. No need to grin, I'm not expecting to find anything. I'm helping out some citizens and getting some fresh air. I'll be- it'll be in the next one, surely. No need to grin. I meant no offense, just... The lieutenant doesn't know how to finish the sentence. He looks at you, putting the trap back on the ground. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> I say with love. Oh, okay, since I had to restart, um... I'll put my point back to conceptualization, because... I did before it crashed. Or not before it crashed, but before I... Stupidly... Exited without saving it, so it would only be fair of me to put it back towards that. Where's the other trap? Can we sit down on the swing again? You'd think Kim would be happier because I sang a song for him. <laughs> he just doesn't like cryptids. Near the boathouse, west of the Feld building. Trap morale just set up in the crypt as well, just camp. Far northeast of the Feld building. Okay. I'll try. <laughs> I just need to do something until the next day. Hold up. Is there anything in the shack here again? I already checked it, but this music is gonna make me fall asleep. Okay, still nothing, I guess. It's so weird. Oh god, I'm stuck. Ugh. Freaking. <laughs> uh. Alright. <laughs> Jeez. I'm gonna have to edit so much of the sound. <laughs> Me walking from one place to the next. Is it over here? There's gotta be a trap over here, right? Whoa, it's a rock. <laughs> nice. There's money in the rock. Nice. Whoa. What is this place? This barrel has been recently discarded. It still smells of fuel oil. The chain trails off into the ocean to who knows where. These rusty gears used to turn the whole machine. Can we go in? An old door, worn by Whoa. elements, guards the depot. The wind has blown a sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. It cannot be retried? What is this thing anyway? It's military. A service depot of some sort. Used to serve what? Probably something that is no longer there. The lieutenant looks at the hunching concrete toad in front of him. <laughs> Wait, what? What toad? Alright, walk away. I'm gonna have to try that when I up my interfacing like crazy. I really want to get in there now. Mm. I can't believe you can't retry it. Wait, hold on. What if you have your uh, pry bar? Does that make a difference? An old door nope. worn by elements. It says unopenable on it, so. Shit, man. Alright, well, maybe that's like an end game thing. I don't know. Oh! White polo shirt! Nice! What? <laughs> Oh wow, <laughs> wait, hold on, I need to take off my jacket and then look at it. <laughs> I look like a golfer. Like a golfing dad. A white polo shirt. This shirt looks worn and smells a bit. You can't help but wonder, who would leave it stuffed in a tear container? What kind of man would even wear a polo shirt? This might be one of life's mysteries that will never be solved. Polo shirts aren't that bad. I mean, they're not the coolest thing in the world, but... Put on my cloak. 
There are things that are worse than polo shirt. Let me just say that. Oh, sick. A trap. A familiar apparatus lies among the reeds. Another one of Morel's traps. Weighed down by stones to keep it in place. Look around. The reeds shake sadly in the coastal breeze. Snow specks the stalks. Most of it melts quickly, relinquishing form to darkness. Is that the same thing as last time? The wind picks up here, oh. near the cape's end, surrounding the narrow strip of land from three cardinal directions. It's cold for this time of year. Yeah, it's snowing. <laughs> Reach for the trap. This trap is also full of panicked locusts. No sign of any cryptozoological beast inside. Another empty trap. The lieutenant takes a note more out of habit than duty. Let's keep going. The next one is the lucky one. How are you enjoying the cardio, Lieutenant? I'm quite enjoying myself. Again, I want to make it absolutely clear that I don't really believe in the fa the phasma exists, okay? Uh, <laughs> how are you enjoying the cardio? Always up for a good job. Otherwise, would I still be on this case with you? <laughs> he smiles and raises his collar. It's windy. I suppose not. That is pretty funny. Oh. Whoa, is that a light tower? Cigarette butts cleaned away under the rock. Brand something. <laughs> I didn't get to read it. Someone's made a campfire here a long time ago. Hello. A rusted, broken control box for the radio relay tower. Why did I say it like that? Relay. Not relay. Okay. Okay, let's look at that last. Scented scarf. What the hell is that sound? It's kind of crazy. Okay, let's look at it. I couldn't take off my necktie. It is kind of pretty though. This light springtime scarf smells like a men like men's cologne mixed with cheap laundry detergent. Someone must have left it behind, probably from a date. Wear it if you want to delude yourself that spring has arrived. Tiny inlets there, off in the distance where the post trail toward. Toward what? Jeez, I don't know what that sound is. This ladder's too rusty, rusty to climb. The sea air has eaten away at it. Man, I was hoping we could do something with that, but I guess not. I take a mental note. I can't pronounce that. It seems important somehow. Whatever that. I think that was the brand of the cigarette or something. Alright, so we did one. I think that's northeast. The boardwalk rises to your south. It casts a long shadow over you. Hey man, it's good cardio, you know? Like I said. Nice. The music in this game is so good. It makes you want to cry a little bit. I guess they took away the body. Stop messing with the coin viewer and hold on to something. The wind is so strong. Yeah, let's not stay out here too long. Kind of scared. Let's see if I can figure out where everything is. Uh, the sun is gone. I'm dead. I know there's one down here, but I don't know where the last one would be. Let's try it. <laughs> this is the trap Morel just set. Check it over, he said. It's just a technicality. But Look around. the reeds by the abandoned campsite sway and tremble while the snow falls all around. The later it gets, the colder. Remnants of the camp can still be seen in the sand. The fire that's gone out. You feel strange somehow. Okay, reach for the trap. Nothing but locusts in this trap as well. Definitely no cryptozoological monstrosity. Empty as all of them. One more of these and we're we'll done. <laughs> he pants. His face is red from the cold sea air. He crouches to catch his breath. Bummer it wasn't in here. You getting tired? One more time. I must stress that I did not expect a cryptozoological zoo monstrosity to be... I cannot speak monstrosity to be in this trap. You getting tired? No, no, I'm fine. 
I didn't mean to complain. It's just... <laughs> He's short-winded. The sentence ends there. Okay, I'm sorry. I feel I feel actually kind of bad now. <laughs> I make him run all over the place. I think it's really funny that characters react to, like, actually running around all over the place. The section of the coast hasn't been used in decades. Did I ever go over here? I think I did. This is the last one, right? Okay. Last one. It takes you a moment, but finally, you spot the last of Morel's traps. This one's partially obscured by the reeds. Look around. Behind you, the ruins of a residential building loom over the reeds. They whisper amongst themselves, confidently. Snowflakes cling to their shivering stems. The trap feels light and silent as you pick it up. Something is different here. Huh? No locusts. <laughs> no phasmid Damn either, it. but still. Immediately yell, it's empty! Look closer. Well, debate worked on something. This doesn't mean it was a reed monster, though. Unless you see one in there, I just see an empty trap. I'm hearing a lot of hating. It could totally be a phasmid. I'm <laughs> I don't actually think it is, but the lieutenant studies the trap with you. The netting is a little untidy. Messier than the mm. others. Like someone or something picked up the trap and shook it before dropping it back down on the ground. Huh. Did someone steal it? I do get the feeling that someone or something may have messed with the trap. But what if it was the phasmid? What if it ate them and got out? Yeah, it possibly wasn't the phasmid, but still, Morella needs to know. You're right. But I still need to tell the cryptozoologist about this. Uh, this crypto research has been stupid. I get the feeling someone may have messed with the trap. Perhaps our cryptozoologists have competition in the form of an actual entomologist, or someone else is sabotaging them. I could present more theories, but then I would be taking this on as a case, which I'm not. <laughs> okay. Uh, probably wasn't the phasmid, but still, Morel needs to know. We did sort of promise to tell them, didn't we? <laughs> he seems to regret the fact. Yes, yes he did. But where is he? I, don't, I honestly don't even know. Boat house is shoddily constructed. A strong breeze might blow it over. Now we have to go tell him, right? The last trap was empty. Return to morale in the whirling with the news. Oh, okay, so he is home. Aight. Did I look over here? I think I did. I think. Did I? A scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Okay, I definitely haven't looked over here yet. Also, sorry my dad is being as loud as he possibly can, so that's awesome. Look, Kim, even more bullet holes. Something's definitely gone down here. Hmm, correct. The density of the bullet holes is unusual. Even in a general, average bullet hole frequency in Martinez sense. Hmm. Grim affairs. Looks like someone... Maybe lined people up and just executed them? It's really messed up. The lieutenant examines the wall closely. Meaning, this is a lot of bullet holes. Looks like fully automatic rifle fire. Something you don't see these days. Why not? The manufacturing and sale of automatic rifles was curtailed after the revolution. The destructive power of such tools proved to be too much. We do need to retain some humanity in this world. Yeah. <laughs> Why this many bullet holes? Hold on. Is there anything I can do to improve my chances? These. <laughs> and this. And... Uh... I think that's about as good as I'm gonna get. A scattering of bullets Try it. spread across the court, unable to piece together the big picture just now. There's a hole in the hypothesis. I'm dumb. <laughs> the scattering of bullet holes looks like one giant smiling mouth. Okay. Smiling its deadly smile, laughing at you and the world and the living. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'm big sad. Alright, let's put on my stupid jacket again. Take off the st stupid glasses. I had so I'm failing every freaking check that I possibly can this episode. It's just not... 
<laughs> this ain't my episode, man. Ancient paint is peeling off the roof and the shaded, be shaded bench covered in rust. Sign says... And, uh, yeah, it says that. It's over here. I can't get over... It's in here. The store is not only barred shut, it's inaccessible. Found... Pipo? What is it? What? Oh my god. This small wire framing inside is this futuristic looking found Pipo hat. Gives it the aerodynamic shape of a swoop skier's helmet, but none of its product protective qualities. Covers the wearer's ears and eyebrows to bring down the drag coefficient. Okay. Uh, well, alright. Potent Pilsner. What? A sturdy bottle of beer that tastes like pissed. Not that you would know how piss tastes like, just a guess. The label says it's made in Revachol by... Lafayette Potent Brewery? I can't say that either. Brewery. An old ticket taker booth. No longer in operation. Let's get going and talk to Morel then. Alright, my dumbass uh, thought that I was recording, but I wasn't. Can this episode get any worse? <laughs> Please forgive me, guys. I, sw I swear, I'm so sorry. Uh, basically, Morel was like, uh, My wife wants to thank you. Hi. So, um, oh, sweetie, she says, beaming. I don't even know how to say thank you for finding my husband and helping him out. I hope we haven't been too much trouble for you. Just doing my job, ma'am. It was a truly epic long-distance trek. It was just on my way while I was working the case. I'm basically a, also a cryptozoologist now. Just doing my job, ma'am. Here, I want to <laughs> give you a small token of my gratitude. It's a tie. Mask in origin. The pin is an antique. Quite special. She hands you a thin ribbon held together by a silver bird skull. The little silvery knob holding the tie together feels warm in your hand. It's in the shape of an avian skull with eight eyes. Thanks. What? <laughs> what? Okay, let's look at it. Whoa, that's actually kind of cool. A slender bolo tie held together by an antique clasp in the shape of a bird skull. The skull features eight cavities for eyes. It's disturbing, but you can't look away. Alright, well, thank you. Haha, <laughs> nothing like the gratitude of a good woman. Now then, <laughs> what can I do for you? He gives you a gruff pat on the shoulder. He tries to play it cool, remain professorial. But inside, Promise. this man is itching for some news on those traps. So I checked all the traps. Good. Okay. And? And one of them was empty. Completely empty? The cryptozoologist's eyes grow wide. Yes, there was nothing in the trap. No locusts, no phasmid. No locusts? No phasmid either? That's not ideal. But he rubs his chin. It just means the Insulindian Phasmid is even more clever than we thought. The old woman's face lights up. Of course, more clever. <laughs> the detective whispers to himself. That threw me off. I almost said the lieutenant. Because I. Okay. You're dealing with a subject near and dear to their hearts. <laughs> it might behove you to tread lightly. So I'm saying. Yes. The Phantasmodea picked off the locust and escaped. This is good news, though we'll have to reconsider the design of the traps, make them more secure. Another trip to the reeds. Wait, where the hell are you? <laughs> Where's Gary? Oh god, his companion sighs. Yes, that's exactly what it is. What a daft hunt- what a deft hunter, this phasmid. I don't know, I'm not persuaded. Are you sure you've exhausted all of the alternative explanations? Of course we have. The cryptozoologist- face flushes with ignorant ig indignation i can't say that word either wait morel he may have a point we have an obligation to rule out other hypotheses the old woman raises a hand you're right dear it's a fair point 
But what other explanation could there be? Pardon me. Mm. This is a big deal for us. You've helped us twice now. And brought some great news too. My gratitude and the gratitude of the Societe Cryptozoologique de Ravachol is yours. Thanks. Heartfelt gratitude. But does it feel like closure? What really happened? Hmm. Thank you, it's an honor. We should probably return to our main investigation here. This has been refreshing, but... He says with a straight face and turns to you. Helping cryptozoologists isn't really a priority for our organization, is it? The lieutenant looks out the window, impatiently. Okay. But let me just do this first, and then we can do that, okay? Develop an alternative theory about the missing locusts. A plus two? Plus two, Kuno's a hooligan. <laughs> oh yeah, he might have stolen it. Consider the way the empty trap was disturbed. As though shaken. Most likely the hands of a young person. Hands small enough to fit inside the trap, too. You should ask the red-headed boy, Kuno. I think a little hooligan called Kuno may have stolen the locusts. A little hooligan? But what would a child want with bags? He's weird, trust me. Oh my dear Morel, you've been an old man for too long. Kids love to torment insects almost as much as they love to torment old folks. A shadow of worry passes over the woman's face. Yeah, sounds like Kuno. I'll talk to the little gremlin and see if anything comes up. Delinquents, my favorite. It doesn't sound like it's really his favorite. <laughs> oh, you've been such a dear to us. Please, let us know whatever you turn up. I have a feeling we're getting so close. Well, I see you've got all the help you need. I'll see you tonight at my place. Let's play suzerainty, but no more field trips for me. After this mm. is your last chance to talk to Gary. Oh shit, really? Really, Gary? We're getting somewhere here. I I'd love to play suzerainty, but... The woman's voice is a little shaky suddenly. Lena, I'm sorry. But you're not getting anywhere. It was some kids. I know the little mutants around here. Leave anything out in the open and they'll steal it. Even if it's bugs. Morel, it's been fun. Really. But I need a bath and I have deliveries to handle. When this tea is done, I gotta run. No, no. Hmm. No need to apologize, Geary. You'd be more than helpful. <laughs> we'll have to take a rain check on that game of Sue's rain tea today, though. We're gonna follow this through. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear my stomach. Holy shit. Ugh. The first man to break formation is always a blow to leadership. This is bigger than he lets on. Alright. Oh, hi, Gary. How come his character model looks completely different than he does? What the hell? Always a pleasure to see an you officer know? of the law. Like... I mean, officers. Fuck off. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think I already got everything out of him. I think it's just saying that in case you hadn't, uh, found out he was wearing the armor yet. I know Kim doesn't want to, but he's gonna have to suck it up because I need to talk to Kuno about this. Besides, I really have to kill time because I want to talk to the guy in the balcony, but I can't do that till 9 p.m. I want to talk to her. I see you up there smoking, girl. Ugh. Hi, Kuno. Wait a minute. Oh, jeez. Okay, she's still there. I was like, I don't see Kuno S. Alright. No, no, not Kim. Here. Kuno's like Kuno's dad? Kuno doesn't give a fuck about anything. I have a bad feeling about Kuno's dad. You wouldn't happen to know anything about any missing locusts? No. Kuno doesn't give a fuck about bugs. So he knows locusts are bugs. Hmm. Interesting. Oh my god, I told you that shit is lame! The little one seems distraught. Shut up, C. Now they're gonna take you to lame prison! She sounds like she's about to cry, out of disappointment at Kuno's newfound lameness. Because he absolutely took them. Um, what's this about? Now hold on, no one is lame here. Just tell me what happened. Deny everything, Kuno! You need to lawyer up! 
Kuno's not gonna say anything without his lawyer present. There's definitely Come something on. going on here. Remember his pig's head shack? You should check it out. All right. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Thanks, Kuno. All right, his shack. Let's go check it out. Got any locusts hiding in there? Thank God I don't feel like death anymore. Holy shit. I was in so much pain. Like, unbearable amount of pain. <laughs> I think the Tylenol finally kicked in. Oh, there's the bugs. Yes. It's crawling with locusts in here. All around you, the hisses and chirps of locusts fill the musky air. The earthen floor of the shack has been shaped into mounds of mud dotted with little holes for windows. Like skyscrapers, spires of dirt and sand rising. Accommodations for their insectoid inhabitants. Why would you want to steal the bugs, Kuno? Well, detective, it appears you've solved the case. <laughs> the lieutenant looks around, writes something in his notebook, and turns to you. Of the locusts. For the missing locust case, which is a subcase of the imaginary <laughs> insect case. So at least that's going well. <laughs> yes, precisely what I was thinking. Stop being so sarcastic, Kim. I'm going to tell him off. Oh, I'm not being sarcastic at all. We are making real progress here. This man. When someone says they're not being sarcastic, it's usually a good sign that they're being very sarcastic. Yep. You think the Insulidian Phasmid is nearby? If anything, the presence of the Locust points to the opposite. The Phasmid did not take the bait from the traps. It was Kuno. The Phasmid doesn't exist. But what do I know? He shrugs. Use your powers of deduction. You knew the magic bug was nowhere near here. The phasmid is impairing your judgment. I guess. But I wanted to see a phasmid. We should talk to Kuno about this. Get him to stop. I'll let you handle the Kuno side of things. You are doing just fine. Alright. <laughs> you don't want to talk to Kuno? Why not? Isn't it just so much fun? Kuno, I found your bugs. Okay. Kuno's like Kuno's dad. Kuno doesn't give a fuck about anything. I know you took the locust from the traps the cryptozoologist set up. Yeah. Kuno took the bugs. So what? He says slowly, meeting your gaze with sullen defiance. So it wasn't the phasmid. A wave of disappointment washes over you. I was really hoping it would be the reed phasmid that ate locusts, not you, Kuno. You say you don't give a fuck about bugs, and you go and build a whole bug town. Why still locusts? Couldn't you find some other pets? You build a whole bug town. It's not bug town. It's the city of locusts. Locusts aren't just bug shit. They come out of the sky like a fucking shadow. Shit descends. <laughs> he says, enunciating every syllable. Stop! She wails from behind the fence and buries her face in her hands. Hey, honestly, this is a healthy hobby for him compared to just doing drugs. <laughs> you stop. It's like their fucking night. Local city. Night city. City of rage. There's a tug of war over the name of his fantastical city. It's almost too big for his imagination. <laughs> the girl forces herself to watch again. The corners of her eyes twitching from discomfort. Let him have a hobby, girl. The lameness is causing her physical pain. The damage may be permanent. Uh, City of Rage sounds like a cool place. What are you, some kind of artist now? Whatever, kids, I just wanted to ask. City of Rage sounds like a cool place. Oh, Kuno, the pig wants to help you! <laughs> oh, that's how lame it is! Please just don't say you're... An artist! <laughs> Maybe I am an artist! You hear that, everyone? I'm a fucking artist now. He pushes his chest out. Did he just say I? Kuno usually calls Kuno Kuno. <laughs> I'm actually kind of proud of him. Hold on, did I hear you right? You said I. That's great, Kuno. That's cool to make art. Oh my god, Kuno! He's gonna make you totally lame in, like, three seconds! <laughs> Yo, fuck you, see? Kuno can be what Kuno wants to be. Kuno's his own man. Kuno's free. He tears up the buttons of his shirt, trying to rip them open. They don't give way. Kuno made himself into Kuno. 
Kuno can make himself into anything. Kuno can make himself into a pig if he wants. Kuno can make himself into a f Kuno doesn't give a shit. And you ruined it. <laughs> make yourself into a pig, Kuno. You'll have to take me away. A leaden silence fills the yard. In it, you hear snow melting, dripping from the eaves. Someone closing a window. Hmm. So that's what this is about. So she doesn't want him to become a police officer because she knows that she'll get locked up. That depends on the choices you make, young girl. Me and Kuno have discussed this. I promise I won't do that. See nothing. I promised. I don't believe you! She disappears entirely behind the fence. For once, the boy is lost for words. He turns completely red now, with splotches of white beginning to appear across his face. Use this momentary confusion to take control of the situation. I need you to stop taking locusts from the traps. The cryptozoologists are trying to find something very important. Those locusts are bait. I have to ask, what does the lo city of locusts mean? What's going to happen to the locusts? I need you to stop taking them. I don't give a shit. I don't need the locusts anyway. Shit is all lame now. She was right. He turns towards the fence. The girl's face appears again, above the fence, just long enough to make eye contact with Kuno. I have to ask, what does the city of locusts mean? It don't mean anything. It's shit. Kuno just likes to focus. Kuno likes to concentrate <laughs> on shit. Build shit when he's zipping hard. Fuck. He turns his burning face up to the falling rain. Pig, you really shouldn't have fucked with Kuno City. Now it's all fucking lame. Sorry. What's going to happen to the locusts? Nod towards the shack. Kuno's gonna let the fucking locusts die. Okay, I'll be off. The fuck are they trying to catch anyway? With the traps? He asks before you leave. The Insolidian Phasmid. Huh. He mutters to himself. He recognizes the name. Wait, you know what the Insolidian Phasmid is? Bitches think Kuno doesn't know shit. The fuck out of here. Kuno's tired of this shit. He says angrily. There's silence between the two children. They're not saying anything to each other, nor looking in each other's direction. I believe you, Kuno. Aww. Why do I kind of feel bad for him, though? Missing insect's case. Okay. He promised to stop. Now we can tell Morel. Then it'll finally be time to freaking talk to the guy. <laughs> I'm hoping. All right, Morel. We got some news. Hello, officer. I think I almost have it. A new trap design, that is. I know you're skeptical, but I have a good feeling about this. I had a chat with this kid, Kuno. He promised to stop stealing the locusts. So he was just a child. He purses his lips, crestfallen. Thank you for telling us, sweetie. This is good news, right? It means we can try again. I feel bad for them. She turns to smile gently up at her husband. She acts chipper, but something's changed in her tone. A hidden worry. Yeah, you're right. We just need to restock the empty trap. Then we'll need to inspect the traps one more time. And then maybe we can. <coughs> oh man. The aging cryptozoologist breaks into a hideous coughing fit. He has a 38 degree fever. Ooh. His resilience has given way. Uh -oh. Darling, I told you to take it easy. You're getting sick. Maybe it's time to go home. She looks at- how? She looks at him with tender concern. You're right, you're right. We can come back next season, when it's warmer. He breathes carefully, not to start coughing again. There won't be a next season. Not for this. Find a phasmid or admit defeat, people. Man, I'm really feeling this is costing me a time- Me time on my main investigation. No, it's not, okay? I do, I'm trying to kill time. It's not worth risking your health. You should call today and go home. I'd offer to help, but I have my own things to do. Refuse. That's what Kim wants me to do. Um... Damn it, maybe I can still restock the traps for you? We've come too far to quit. I'm gonna restock 
the traps. Let's do this. Except enthusiastically. We are getting really carried away with this, aren't we? Fine. It's better than having these people get pneumonia on the coast. But after this... Okay. He makes a show of suppressing a sigh. He wants to see this tale through as much as you. Otherwise, he'd have stopped this already. But he cannot let it drag out after this. Really? It's too much, officer. He starts coughing again. <coughs> what Morel means is we're grateful for your help. She nods to her husband. He's a fresh batch of life. Oh, jeez. They should slide right down the Jeez. Front. <laughs> thank you again. We would definitely mention you, should this lead to a discovery. I'm not talking co-discovery, of course, but... Uh... Honorable mention, right? Wow. Co-discovery? <laughs> You'd be famous. You'd show them all. This does tingle the pleasure center. This would show them all. We need to get you on that list of discoverers. No question about that. Great. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll do that some other time. Maybe tomorrow. So, um, let's see here. Box with locusts. The cardboard box with several rows of little holes in the lid. Though at first glance, the box seems perfectly ordinary. Upon a closer examination, it's obvious that it's been prepared with great care. All right. Uh, smoker on the balcony. Visit apartment 28 sometime after 21. Alright. Now we go. Because Kim wants to go so bad. But, I mean, you know. He would have stopped it if he didn't actually care. He's just being a little salty. Alright, has anything changed? Am I missing you anything? Hear someone walking around inside. Okay. We don't need to go in there. So, let's go out to the balcony. And pray to God he's there. The music in this game is so good. Oh boy. You hear distant traffic. Night is falling on the city. Maroon glow of light pollution rises from the east. The curtains shift just a little. Someone is watching from within. That's not creepy at all. I see him up there. Hey, mister. Of course, I've thought about quitting, but for what? Alright. What's up, dude? John Marie, You found me. The young man on the balcony gives you a bright smile before taking another drag from a cigarette. His slender figure is backlit by city lights. Its distant streets and motorways flashing like diamonds. It feels like a Friday. He seems to be in a good mood tonight. Yes, he does. Yes, the cleaning lady let us in. Beautiful. Are you alright? <laughs> he replies, smiling as he looks at you, something sparkles in his eyes. So tell me, are you here to make things right again? Um, what is he talking about? That's what I'm aiming for, yes. Honestly, I'm just trying not to screw anything up. I'm not going to make things right. I'm just going to make them spectacular. Ignores question. question. I was hoping to talk about a possible witness. Your balcony overlooks a murder scene. Then I have some good news for you. His eyes narrow. A nearby street lamp casts a shadow on his chin, drawing out a slender, the slender cheekbones. This guy's a bit weird. My Sunday friend is visiting me tonight. I told him about you and he'd like to say hello. Step in. He's already waiting. Is this a setup? By the way, I'm really digging the view here, point to the city line. Is it Friday tonight? It feels like a Friday. I thought it was Wednesday. Is it? Why would I want to meet your friends? Very well, I'll talk to him, but first I want to talk to you. I have so many questions. Uh, I'm digging the view here. Mm-hmm. That's why I chose this place. Martinez is special, isn't it? This is weird. Before he didn't want to talk to me at all, and now he's inviting me in. He looks away, his cigarette, and glowing in the dark. Wait. Suddenly you are digging things? <laughs> Lieutenant whispers to you, shaking his head. I'm s I just... I'm fine, alright? It's fine. Is it Friday tonight? It feels like Friday. Yeah, it does feel like the end of the week. Such gentle weather. Even the rain feels nice. He leans over the railing and sticks out his hand to feel the rain. Is he high? <laughs> Why do I want- why would I want to meet your friend? Trust me. You do. Very well. I'll talk to him, but first I want to talk to you. I have so many questions. That's nice, but I don't have anything to tell you. It's my friend you're looking for, not me. He takes another drag of his unfiltered cigarette and looks around. It's getting dark, and the neighboring windows have lit up one by one. 
Downstairs, a cat crosses the yard, disappearing into the bush. Besides, I've got to run. Huh? It's going to leave you alone again. That's sad. Where do you have to go? Something tells you you're never going to talk to an individual this cool or mysterious ever again. Run where? But I just found you again. Go if you must. I don't care. I don't care about people leaving me all the time. Run where? To the city. It's a beautiful night. He gestures idly towards distant motorways. Only if you promise that we'll talk again. It's important. Something flutters in the corner of the lieutenant's mouth as you're saying those words. I mean for the investigation. We'll talk. Just not tonight. Okay. <laughs> um, the smoker assures you, brushing his hand through his hair. Take care, alright? Oh, jeez! Just walk straight through Kim. <laughs> he says with another disarming smile before slipping off into the night. And he's gone again. Looks like it's becoming a theme for him. He's always leaving. Why is he always leaving, Kim? There's something so different about him that I just can't put my finger on. Different, of course. His shirt is... His shirt. Why is his shirt always unbuttoned? He's such a good listener. I like talking to him. There's just something so mysterious about the way he talks and moves. He's... <laughs> Am I in love with him? He smells good. Why on earth does he smell so good? Oh my god. Harry is in love with him. He's, there's mis something mysterious about him. Something so mysterious about the way he talks. <laughs> Lieutenant squints his eyes trying to hold back laughter. Very mysterious. Very. What the hell was that? He's barely holding it <laughs> It's all he can do to keep from bursting out in laughter. Okay, just laugh Come at on, me. detective. Let's go. We've got a potential witness to interview. His Sunday friend, remember? He nods at the apartment door before you. I'm not in love with him, okay? I just had to... <laughs> I just want to make sure he... <laughs> you finally met up with the mysterious smoker on the balcony. He said the one you want to talk to is his friend. His friend is waiting for you inside. Go and meet him right now. He won't be there later. Alright. Oh god. <laughs> if I was gonna flirt with anyone in this game, we all know who it would be, right? <laughs> Come on now. Hello? Hi, mystery person. Let's look around first. Quarterly Business Magazine. I'm gonna snoop first before I talk to you, sorry. Government- oh, dishes soaked up in pot. Governmental issues- Take me all over Revishol, as you can see. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna raid your fridge. Days for open lectures at a local university. Flyers for underground parties. An empty ashtray. Samaran conical hat. Oh my god. Wait, what did it say? Eh. This tawny cone-shaped hat it looks like a beacon of Samaran wisdom. It's straw sticking up like antennas. Thank god you can't really see people's reactions when they see you strolling around in this incredibly insensitive headpiece. <laughs> okay, we'll take it off. No cultural appropriation in this house. A photo of the same apartment dated year one. Expensive men's perfume lingers in the air. Party dragon silk robe. What? What? Okay. Oh my god. Drama. Become the dragon. This sleazy, silky bathrobe is vibrant in vibrant blue features a roaring dragon on its front, ready to take off into the night. A red belt has been provided for fastening. It's culturally insensitive, but only for people who are not from Sale. The real Saleites probably don't care. What happens if- Okay, Kim isn't reacting. Oh lord, let's take it off. Hold on, what if I take off? <laughs> oh my god, it's so bad. No, no. Take it off, take it off. Oh my god, take it off. Um, alright. Buckets of paint on a layer of old newspapers. An exquisite canopy bed made of metal. Hi. 
Oh, Officers Lord. of the Revachol Citizens Militia. The man in business casual removes his cufflinks. You shouldn't be seeing him in an intimate setting. For some reason, you feel this man is your superior. Superior, but he's not in the command chain. His hands are clean and well manicured. This is a man who knows the importance of appearances. My name is Charles Vildrouin, and I am an official with the coalition government. I work for the okay. Institute of Price Stability on assignment from Sur Lately. Cool. I heard <laughs> you talking to my friend outside. Very good. Super. I am here to assist you in any way possible. Ask me about the hanging. I don't trust this guy. No, first ask an innocuous personal question to get the interview off on the right foot. Oh no. Yes, make it clear you're the one setting the terms here. Oh no. Before we go on, I absolutely have to inquire about this wonderful canopy. Point at the bed. Show him the silk robe. Before we get to that, tell me where you got this beautiful silk robe from. Show him the Samaran hat. We'll get to that right after I tell you tell me the story behind this. Black Samar in a hat. Down to business. Where'd you get this beautiful silk robe from? Oh, we got it from an atelier <laughs> in the East Delta Commerce Center. Personally, I think it's a little culturally insensitive, but the material is great. Sadly, the shop is now out of business. Okay. <laughs> That's really all I can tell you about it. He forms a little rooftop with his fingers. Cold air sweeps in from the balcony. That didn't work at all. The lieutenant takes out his notebook and nods to you to proceed. Okay, you actually witnessed the lynching? What's an official like you doing in Martinez? Can you tell me about your friend? What are you doing in Martinez? The coalition is only looking out for the price stability. Inflation is a killer, like a heart disease blocking the normal circulation of the economy. It must be controlled. <laughs> he raises an index finger. It kind of freaks me out a little bit. The economy impacts the entire international community, which is why it requires international oversight. Okay, but what are you doing here in this apartment? So you're some kind of bureaucrat? What is this international community? Um, what are you doing in this apartment? Ah, uh, well, I'm renovating it. It is an interesting project. The building used to be a 12-story skyscraper before the cannons took the top four stories off. This, of course, happened when the coalition forces landed here. You could say I'm undoing some of the material damage the international community caused when we arrived here. So you're some kind of bureaucrat? Yes. As I said before, I'm a commissioner from sur la -Clé working for the Institute of Price Stability. Um... This is one of the main projects of the Moral Intern. He glances at his watch. Oh, the Moral Intern. Um... What is this international community? La communauté internationale is what Rivacholians colloquially call the coalition. In other words, the nations that stopped the disaster of the revolution. And what do and what do I call the coalition? Your employer, technically speaking. The governing authority of Rivachol. The RCM is but one part of this provisional administration. Okay, still didn't really explain what he's doing in this apartment specifically. What is the price stability? It is the most important thing. That doesn't tell me anything. It's the central goal of any sound monetary policy. Maintaining the price stability is essential to maintaining high levels of economic activity, which is essential for maintaining high levels of employment. Doesn't seem like that's working here. Which is essential for maintaining the social stability. Basically, to make sure the price of bread doesn't change. <laughs> Precisément. Too much inflation, bread becomes too expensive. Too much deflation, it becomes too cheap for bakers to produce. Right. That's why the Institute of Price Stability works to keep inflation just below 2%. Below 2% of what? But not too far below. <laughs> oh. Too below is also bad. Yeah, what? Below, but close to 2%. You're not answering my questions at all. The coalition believes in the importance of informing the public about the benefits of the price stability. Transparency is one of our principles. Would you like an informational pamphlet? Okay, sure. Give me a leaflet. A sound monetary policy is essential for addressing uncertainty. 
Stability is the raison d'être of the moral inter. It's the reason why I identify as a moralist. But oh, I don't have my leaflets on me today. <laughs> That's too bad. Really? You can always call our information line. Making information available is part of the moral intern's commitment to transparency. I've heard about this moral intern before, but I want to know more. It's the international organization for moralists. Hence, Moralist International. The Institute of Price Stability is just one of its many mind babies, as is the coalition. Turn to Kim. So what I'm hearing is that we're moral intern bitches. <laughs> oh, turn to Kim. So we're actually working for the moral intern? That doesn't seem so bad. <laughs> there are more nefarious powers to work for than the moral intern. Turn back to the Sunday friend. Are you a moralist? But of course. But why? <laughs> because moralists believe in a normal, stable world governed by democratic values. <laughs> Turn to Kim. Lieutenant, are you a moralist? Hmm? Me? I, uh... You've managed to catch oh. the lieutenant off guard, but only for a moment. He quickly recomposes himself. Sorry. I'm a lieutenant of the RCM, dedicated to maintaining law and order in Ravachon. That's a rehearsed answer. A very moralist answer. The man nods. The lieutenant is practiced in the art of putting on a show for one's superiors. Hmm. But what is a normal, stable world? Martinez doesn't seem very normal or stable to me. Martinez? No. Martinez is something else. But what about the rest of the Revachol? Is it part of the normal world? Revachol is generally difficult. It's led by an interim government, which means it hasn't yet achieved full democracy. But they are working towards it. You're all doing very well here, relatively speaking. He gives you an approving nod. I don't know, I don't trust this guy. I don't think I'm a moralist. Moralism sounds incredibly boring. I want more action. Moralism is the ideology of foreign occupiers. Revachol must be governed by Revacholians. Oh, barf. Democracy is a meaningless sham as long as the working class is under the boot heel of capital. It's like every time I'm talking to people, I'm choosing option D, none of the above. Is that moralism? <laughs> Is this option D usually the most reasonable answer? Yes, everything else is super extreme. It's like I'm living with a bunch of lunatics. Sounds like you're a moralist indeed, my friend. Welcome. Thank you. Moralism is all about compromise and achieving the achievable. It's pragmatic, realistic, and level-headed. An ideology for doers. Are you a doer, my friend? It looks to me like you are. I think I am. Now, enough of this delightful political interview. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? All right, one last thing. Tell me about Sulaclef. What's there to say? Sulaclef is a modern, urbanized country that measures <laughs> very high on the human development and freedom index. Mostly, though, it's known as the executive heart of EPIS. Moreover, it is a great sponsor of less emerged countries. Revachol is only one of its many darlings whose progress it supports and cherishes. Darling? That can't be an official designation. What makes Revachol sur la clé? Is that what it said? What makes Revachol is darling? <laughs> because a great percentage of Revachol's culture hails from sur la clé. Its sur language, la its people, its cuisine even. Or at least in the downtown La Delta area. For some reason, his French, French accent is pissing me off. <laughs> Jamrock and other parts of the international zone have been mercifully spared of Sir Laclay's love for meatballs and mashed potatoes. <laughs> okay. Whatever you wish, officer. You actually witnessed the, the lynching? <laughs> I'm sorry to say I did, officer. The man gives a solemn nod. Turn to the lieutenant. This is just the break we've been looking for. Is it because you did it, Mr. Bilad? Uh, Sunday friend, start from the beginning, if you don't mind. Officer, it's very difficult to describe what I saw that night. It was so surreal to me, like in a play. Well, try. He holds out his hands and blossoms his fingers, like a drama teacher set in the scene. If he doesn't add in the, the, um, the fact that he was shot, I'll know he's lying. What do you mean, like in a play? The lieutenant is already scribbling down his notes. It was just so strange. I could barely comprehend what was happening. I was on the balcony when it happened, getting some fresh air. I remember that first they came in, carrying what looked like a body. 
And then I saw all the surrounding windows go dead, one by one. Mm. That's when I understood I should not be seeing this. Sounds like the victim was unconscious, or at least incapacitated. Interesting. Who were they? Can you describe them? I couldn't see their faces well, and there were quite a few of them. But they were very loud and very... Martinez. He pauses, looking for the right wording. It's definitely the union workers. Let's just say that the laboring classes can get rather expressive with their profanities. <laughs> How many of them were there? I couldn't tell you exactly. Less than ten. Maybe eight? The lieutenant sends you a sharp look at the mention of that number. Hmm. Were any of them huge? Like 200 kilograms huge? Did any of them look like drummers? <laughs> okay. I have to say it. I have to. Drummers? <laughs> Why? No. But then, I don't know what a drummer is supposed to look like. Okay, I'm sorry, Kim. <laughs> I think we can drop the drummer angle. That was my bad. <laughs> Lieutenant says impatiently. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Were any of them huge? Like 200 kilograms huge? That's a giant you're describing. <laughs> No, they were all quite human, as far as I could tell. What happened next? I went back inside. Were you able to see anything from inside? Officer, the yard was pitch black. There was nothing to see, but I could still hear their voices. They were threatening to kill that poor man. Hmm. Were they men, women? All men, I presume. But again, I couldn't see very clearly. Uh, not that this really matters. Well, I guess it does. To confirm the dock workers. I believe they were mostly white. Though I believe I saw two Aeropagites among them. And I am quite certain that one spoke with a mask accent. I'm trying to think if I know what that accent is. What happened next? Well, that's the strangest part, officer. Nothing happened. It was oddly quiet for a public lynching. What do you mean nothing happened? They lynched a guy. Eventually, their shouts died down, and that was all. There were no gunshots, no celebratory shouts, no anything. Why didn't you call the RCM? You're right, of course. That is what one is supposed to do in such circumstances. Hmm. I was simply in shock. The man wipes his glasses. I'm afraid I don't have anything else to add. About what time was all this happening, approximately? All I can say is that it was late. You didn't check your watch? My watch? Yes, now I remember. It was 30 minutes past midnight. Give or take. He looks at his watch as though noticing it for the first time. 30 minutes past midnight. So let me get this straight. You didn't actually witness hanging itself, did you? No, I didn't see the corpse until the following day. Well, that was a waste of time. <laughs> Those are all my questions. Thanks for your time. Of course. Anything I can do to assist the RCA doesn't really help us much. It's kind of everything we already know. Can you tell me about your friend? Ah, my friend. My friend is a good young man. His family immigrated here from Kedra, and life has not been easy for him. But he understands the importance of education. He has taken his future into his own hands, and that's all that matters. What's Kedra? Kedra is a candidate member of APIS. But, between you and me, their potential membership is a more... Contentious issue. What do you mean? That it's never going to happen. They enter negotiations in 21, and it's been pending ever since. What's this EPIS thing you keep talking about? EPIS is a very special program developed by the Moral Intern to support certain Occidental nations. It began as a unified system of weights and measures, which proved to be a wild success. Nothing but kilograms and centimeters as far as the eye can see. God, yes. Sweet standardization. The backbone of rationality and commerce. It was such a wild success that we expanded it into an economic union for the processing of steel. Another success. And between you and me, the moral intern feels emboldened by this success. Emboldened to take EPIS to the next level. Uh, okay, but like, what does it stand for? Why, it stands for progress and stability, like the moral intern as a whole. No, what do the letters stand for? It's been such a wild, extraordinary success thus far. 
We are very excited to take it to the next level. You don't even hear the words I'm saying, do you? A supranational political alliance. The United States of Occident. Is it going to be like this place here? You mean Revachon? No. It's going to have transparent democracy. Is Revachon going to be part of the EPIS? It's one day going to be a candidate member of EPIS, sure. Except that candidate members never become full members, do they? Didn't you say that the candidate members never become real members? No, no. Candidate members do become members. Why do we even have the whole system in place if they don't? It just takes time. Time and evaluation. But we were talking about my friend here, not politics. How did you two even become friends? How did any of us become friends? Bad things happening on the insula in Insula? Oil platforms ablaze in the night? Civil wars lasting for years? Finally, the international community is forced to step in. What are you talking about? No one becomes friends that way. Au contraire. It's how millions of people end up where they are. Meeting the people they meet. It's how I came here. And my friend, too. You still haven't told me who he is. Sorry. Who? The man throws a quick glance at his watch. Your friend, the smoker on the balcony. We were just talking about him. But I told you, officer. He's a bright young man here to pursue his education. <sighs> Education is the foundation of our future, especially the arts. It is a cornerstone of our civilization. This guy is so frustrating. Fine, but what's his real name? So all you can tell me about him is that he's here to study the arts? What's his real name? Officer, you have to understand. I can't give you his personal information. I'm sure you have your own methods and databases, right? Please don't put me in this situation. So all you can tell me about him is that he's here to study the arts? He's deeply enmeshed in the study of the fine arts, yes. Which arts? He's a truly free spirit. He likes all the arts. <laughs> Perhaps graphic design, printmaking, who knows? The world is open wide for a talented youth like him. What are you doing in his apartment by yourself? I'm just enjoying the view. The man smiles, nodding to the window. What's... what view? It's dark outside. Listen. He says, raising his hand. The baby is crying in the neighboring apartment. Someone's baby is crying. No, listen. He says again, looking outside. The Insulindian Bay. What about it? This place used to be a luxury accommodation before the revolution. Apartments, of course, were much bigger then. A few walls have been added here and there, leaving some of the tenants without a private bathroom or a kitchen. But the million real view stays. You can't take that away. He nods at the balcony door, his face mirrored in the darkened glass. I was asking about your friend. My friend comes and goes. I'm sure you've seen him around. He's a busy bee. A busy bee? What an odd choice of words. I had something else in mind. I'm all ears, officer. It's all, it's all I a got. Moment, <laughs> officer. Do you have everything oh. you need from me? I'm afraid we won't have the chance to speak again once you leave. Ow. Uh, uh, hold on, why can't we talk later? I'm not going anywhere, I just want to take a look around this apartment. Why can't we talk later? It's against diplomatic best practices for an official in my position to be discussing murders with local militiamen. And I'm pressed for time. After you leave, I should be leaving as well. He pauses. That's not the real reason he's so apprehensive. Men in his position shouldn't be seen loitering around in underprivileged young men's <laughs> apartments in the middle of the night. I just want to take a look around. Sure, go ahead. It's a beautiful space. Let me know if you have any further questions. He glances at his watch. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I missed anything. There's no, like, skill checks or anything. I don't... Don't think I'm missing anything, right? Yeah, okay, it already quick saved, so... I guess we're good. Was there anything else? Of course. I'm glad I could help. I hope I'm not missing anything, but... See ya, dude. Just kind of seemed like a big ol' waste of time to me. He didn't really give us any new information. My finger is bleeding. <laughs> okay. 
groups. Well, that was something. He basically just talked a lot and didn't answer any of our questions. So... What? Did I get everything? Alright. Alright, game. I'm gonna assume I got everything. Alright, well... That didn't really tell us anything. The spread oh. pattern of these bullet holes makes your chest ache. Your breath grows heavier. Examine closer. You peer into the faded marks in the stone. They peer back like an endless row of tiny black holes. Sweat starts trickling down your brow. We don't know how old these are, though. This is bad mojo, man! Fucking horrible <laughs> mojo! The end draws now! Shut up! Your chest feels tight oh, looking at them. It's closing in, caving in, ever tighter. Your breathing grows even heavier. You okay there? The lieutenant's sunlit voice cuts like a blade, bringing you out of the stupor. Breathe out sharply, huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Man, I started feeling really bad for a second. I'm fine. You were looking pale there for a second. What are you looking at? These bullet holes look like the bullet holes we saw before. Bullet holes generally look the same, <laughs> so... Probably. But you're right. More old bullet holes from the revolution. Man, how many people got shot during that revolution? Plenty. Okay. <laughs> All right. Can we go visit Gary? The door is closed again. Okay. Nothing to do here anymore. You hear someone inside, walking from room to room. Whoever lives here must be back home. Hi, Gary. Nice to see you. Hi, Kuno S. Okay, she doesn't have anything to say. Anything new with the wall here? Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. Let's try it again. Yeah. Come on. Why? It's a wall. An ordinary wall. Why must we stop to look at this wall every time we pass by? Okay. I'm just trying my best. <laughs> All right. I think it's time for Betty Bye. I'm going to sleep in my free room for the night, which is pretty cool. I don't have to pay Gart any more money. All right. Well, I'm kind of disappointed that that guy didn't really It's getting late and it's snowing. Time to call it a day. Didn't really seem like there was anything to do with him. Good night, Kim. Send him away for the night. Good night, officer. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. Enter the shack. So I have the option to shave off my mutton chops. But, uh, I'm not gonna do that. Because <laughs> I think Harry looks good with the mutton chops. It's like an essential part to his personality. You can't take those suckers off. Alright. Time for bed. The bed is comforting. If a bit run down. Still. You've earned a rest. I really hope I didn't miss anything with that guy. Across the room, the heating system hums its soft lullaby. The mattress feels soft and sheets warm. It only takes you moments for the world to fall away. <laughs> Jeez, it's terrifying. Thoughts, baby. Oh, God. A million little lights in the dark. You're one fine instrument, brother. Thanks. <laughs> all those faces and all those names. All that laughter and screaming and scheming around. Every corner and every street. You should be happy with me, all right? Yeah, I let you sing. <laughs> Recorded in you forever on ferrotape. Spinning in eternity, spinning on empty, spinning, spinning, tell me, am I dreaming? No, you're spinning tapes at the discotheque. The great unceasing disco of the mind. The flash, the bang, the endless learning experience. Spinning on in eternity. On and on it goes, for untold hours, 
at the disco where you first asked her to dance. Hmm. Rising. Rising. Above the dark curvature. The great wingspan of sleep. Studded with stars. Behold, there are millions of them down there. The first time. The last time. The smoke in her mouth. The plotted flowers. The faces turning, changing. What is it? It's the world, Harry boy. And you're made of it. Every day you're out there, you make more of yourself from it. I'm afraid you can't be unmade now. Oh, I'm becoming a new person because I lost my memory, man. You can never forget this shit. The colors of voices, the rain, the snow, I don't want to, it's beautiful. Endless visions erase them. That's beautiful. Beautiful. It's stuck on loop, whirling, spitting out words and images. You're the son of the world again. Harrister. <laughs> A ceaseless agent. Picking up litter and old newspaper. Hey. <laughs> collecting your little bubblegum wrappers and idiotic picture postcards. Meaningless, meaningless keepsakes. Reading your awful letters and recalling things, aren't you? The endless names of the world. An address book you are. The map of a city. That's right, I am an agent of the world. But what if I wanted to be the agent of nothing? It's too late. You're not made of nothing anymore. You're something now, Harry. I tried to drown you in the black water, but you re-emerged. Kicking and screaming. Running. And for what? Did he try to drown himself? For the greater good. Solving your little crossword puzzles, doing your tasks, crossing names off lists, trying to become some sort of world detector. It won't make it okay. It won't put smoke back in her mouth. We're making progress, measured steady progress. Oh, Is my limbic system not going to speak. There he goes again. He's a real political animal, ah, Harry. He still doesn't see that it's the world that's changing him. He's got <laughs> no idea what he's in for. Why? Cause only love can break your heart. Beep, beep, beep. The alarm is ringing, Harry. The disco circus goes on and on. You barely slept three hours last night. You can do it. It's nothing. Do it for the city. Go. Do it for the picture puzzle. Put it all together. Solve the world. One conversation at a time. Well, that wasn't ominous as hell. He's got no idea what he's in for. You said I tried to drown you in the black water. Did he try to drown himself in the tub in the hostel room? Jesus, Harry. You crazy boy. Hmm. Let's see what's in store for us in day four, huh? Good. You're up. Listen, there's something that's been bothering you for a few days now. What is it? It's a suspicion, or a feeling, really, that things are not quite in hand around here. An earth-shattering deduction from your psyche. What will those guys come up with next? Every day, things seem to spin more and more wildly out of control. The center isn't holding. And despite your efforts to moderate and 
contain these energies, things only seem to be getting worse. Wait, I thought I, I thought things were going pretty well. Let's get right to it. What needs to be done? I thought things were going well. Oh sure, you've been making progress on your case, interviewing people, solving side tasks, but who's focusing on the big questions? I assume the most qualified and highly credentialed people were taking care of that stuff. This doesn't really sound like my job. What am I supposed to do? You've got to find out who bears la responsabilité. What exactly is that? The most awesome, terrible thing. It is human nature to crave la responsabilité and to deny it. That's why it must be distributed across many different organizations, agencies, offices, and portfolios. I thought I was assigning responsibility for the murder. Harry, Harry, you're thinking about this too narrowly. La responsabilité isn't concerned with trivial questions like who killed who. It's about the real issues. The human welfare index, the price of staple goods, the transition to real democracy. All right, give it to me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This isn't some kind of dictatorship. You can simply seize la responsabilité for yourself. It must be given by a legitimate authority. What? Like a committee. Do we really have time for all this? And who should sit on this committee? Sounds like too responsibility for me. Too much responsibility for me. I don't want it. Do we have time for all this? There is always time to follow best practices. Once someone's decided to cut corners for the sake of expediency, <laughs> who knows what else they're capable of? Okay. Swift, decisive action. And who should sit on this committee? Only the most even keeled minds in Martinez. Kim. <laughs> Your half brother, the lieutenant, yeah. is a natural place to start. Is he my half brother? I, Together, I don't you'll be think able so. To discover who has la responsabilité in Rivershaw. And if necessary, you'll have the wisdom <laughs> and expertise to assign it among yourselves. And what happens once we've assigned responsibility? Most likely, your findings will be collected in a report, which hmm. will be carefully reviewed by your superiors. <laughs> okay. Once they've reviewed it, those same superiors will produce a set of recommendations to be taken up at the next meeting of the Standing Committee. Will I get a raise? Rest assured, no matter what happens, it will be done through the proper channels. I'm prepared to take on this awesome burden. Good luck. Your report is eagerly anticipated. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see what that says. Take on la responsabilité. Things are things down here are a mess. Someone really ought to do something about it. First, though, you and some other moralists should probably form a committee to decide whose responsibility this is. Form a committee of more or less assigned responsibility. Kim might throw, might know where to start. Okay. <laughs> well, let's give it a go. Good morning. What's up? Good morning. <laughs> yes. Kim, we need to talk about responsibility. Ah, I'm glad to hear it, detective. I was wondering when we'd get to this very subject. <laughs> Good, we're on the same page then. What do you mean? If you ask me, it's high time for you to set aside these frivolous side tasks and focus 100% of your energies on the case before us. No, no, I mean like, love responsibility. You know, the kind that gets assigned. Why are you pronouncing it like the <laughs> gentleman from the Institute of Price Stability? You know what? Forget it. What specifically are you trying to assign responsibility for? Um, point to the ground. For the murder. Point to yourself. For my disaster of a life. Spread your arms wide. For this whole situation. Ah, uh, now I understand. Lieutenant nods his head gravely. Next, I suppose you're going to tell me you need to form a committee to assign this responsibility. How did you know? <laughs> Simple. Because moral intern types love to form committees. In any event, I am just a humble law official. I may work under the moral intern's umbrella, but I'm certainly not qualified to serve on any committee. You know who might be, though? That Mr. Villedroin. 
the gentleman you met in the young man's apartment. If I were trying to get in touch with the coalition, I would start by seeking him out. But first you might need to speak with his young companion. Now, was there anything else? Nothing. <laughs> he doesn't want to be a part of my committee. Damn. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna leave this episode off here. I just wanna apologize for everything in this episode. I know. I'm apologizing once more. What else is new? But um, I am still in a lot of pain. To be honest, I probably shouldn't even record today, but you know what? It's fine. We got um, <clears throat> the Sunday friend thing done, which was very strange. Uh, he didn't even tell us the name of, of his friend. And we didn't really get anything new out of the guy. I don't know if I missed something important. I probably did. I really hope I didn't, though, because that would have sucked. Um... I'm glad we got that thing done with the zoologist guys. It was pretty funny. Um, I wonder if they're going to be there when we go back to the Whirling Rags. I don't know. It made it seem like they were going to go home. But maybe they weren't if we uh, if we reset the traps for them. So maybe there's that. I'll probably do that uh, in the next episode. And hopefully I'll get more progress done on the main story next time. Um, I think Kim's kind of getting fed up with me, so I gotta get on his good side again. Anyways, guys, in the next episode, I promise I'll feel a little better and I'll not push myself to record when I probably shouldn't. So, that's probably for the best, right? So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> or, or a dislike, you know? I'm, I'm fine with that too. Um, subscribe if you're new, because I'd really love to have you stick around and watch me play some more video games and hang out with me. So yeah. I will see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.